Greetings in the name of Christ. I'm Walter Meyer III. We will be reviewing Exodus 20, verses 1 through 17, the Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent, a well-known text, the Ten Commandments. We'll be going through the Hebrew, and I have some notes which I'll be following as well. So let's turn now to the Hebrew text. And the first portion is straightforward. Elohim is the subject, and Devar the verb, God spoke, and now the direct object marked by eighth, all, and then we have next the words, the these, all these words, and then Lamor saying. Of course, Lamor marks what follows as a direct quotation. Next line here, Anoki, Yahweh, Eloheka. Uh, that we have anoki first, that it appears in the text, this independent subject pronoun, is for emphasis. This is emphatic. I am Yahweh, your God. And of course, when we have Yahweh, we think of this as the covenant name. And all that God is doing then for his covenant people, Israel. I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you up or brought you out. The verb here is yatsa, who brought you out. So this is the hifil of the verb yatsa, the hifil perfect. It is a first common singular with the ka suffix. Notice that the ka suffix indicates you singular. That was the same thing back here with eloheka, your God. And throughout verses 2 through 17, you is singular, and this means that God is speaking to each individual Israelite and laying this on his or her heart. So, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, Eretz Mitzrayim, from the land of Egypt, from, now literally, from house of slaves. Uh, we can put that into English idiom as from the house of slaves, uh, from the house of bondage, and some other possibilities. All right. Now going to the next portion. Lo yehya leka. There will not be, now this is a literal translation, there will not be to you Elohim acherim, other gods, and now this last phrase, al panau. Uh, this is a difficult phrase, a more challenging phrase. Uh, this is the preposition all, and then the noun panim, which means face. Uh, that's panim, uh, a plural noun, and it has the i suffix, which indicates my. So, there will not be to you other gods al panai. Now, how do we understand this last phrase beginning with the preposition all? First of all, the translation, except me, is questionable. So I'm not going to go with that translation. Another observation is this, that the Hebrew preposition all has such a wide use and so many meanings that no one translation can be insisted on to the exclusion of others. So we have to recognize some flexibility for this last portion here. Now, one legitimate translation would be literally taking all as on and then panai as my face, literally on my face, which then Putting that into English idiom would be understood as in my presence or before me. Now, since God is present everywhere and his presence is barred from no place, this means that Israel is not to have even one other God. The allegiance of the people is to be only to Yahweh. So, here is the proposed translation. Uh, there will not be to you, or you will not have other gods, and then in my presence. 
at the end here, you look at the Masoretic text, there's actually an error there in the Masoretic text. There should be a sof pasuk, uh, those two diamonds, one on top of the other, which indicate the end of a verse. Uh, that's missing here. That should be actually in the text. All right. Now, going on to the next line. Lo ta'asel leka pesel. You shall not make for yourself. Pesel would be a hewn image or a carved image. Wakol temuna, nor any likeness. Now, I'm going to supply some words here. Nor any likeness of anything. And then going on, asher, which is in the heavens, mema'al above, what well, asher, and which is on the earth, mitakath below, and which is in the waters below the earth. So again, no hewn image, no carved image, no likeness of anything. This last phrase, the waters below the earth, well, the earth is regarded as higher than the waters. So water is at one level, the earth at a higher level. The next portion here. Uh, here we have this, this verb so frequent in the Old Testament. And it's analyzed in different ways. One possibility is to see this as the verbal root shaka, so sheen, chet, hey, and to regard this as a hith paleo with the meaning bow down. Uh, you shall not bow down to them. Now the question is, what is the hem suffix translated as them refer to? I understand it as going back to the preceding verse, and this is now a matter of taking the verse by sense. Uh, thinking then of images, likenesses of uh, things in the heavens or on the earth or in the waters. You shall not bow down to them and you shall not serve them. So the verb avad here. Going on. Ki anu ki Yahweh Eloheka, because I, Yahweh, your God, El Kana, am a jealous God. Kana means jealous. This is an adjective. I'm a jealous God. Pokave, this is now a participle, visiting the iniquity of the fathers or iniquity of fathers. So our own iniquity and then of fathers of both. On banim, on sons or children. On, now we have an adjective here, shilesh. And this means pertaining to the third. You see that it's a plural with the im ending. On those pertaining to the third, on those belonging to the third generation, and on the same thing here now with rive, same kind of an adjective uh, belonging to the fourth, on those belonging to the fourth generation. Of, now the preposition la here can be understood of, as of, of my hating ones. The verb here is sane to hate. This is a participle. You see the I ending indicating this is a suffix, my, and it's a plural, my hating ones, those who hate me. So let me repeat. Visiting iniquity of fathers on children, on those belonging to the third generation and on those belonging to the fourth generation of those who hate me. Now the next line. Here's a good example of the adversative wow, but and then the verb asa, do, make, uh, doing chezed. And there's that word which is impossible to capture with one English word, chezed. It's a powerful word of Old Testament theology, a gospel word. Loving kindness, loving faithfulness. But showing loving kindness to the thousands of those who love me. Now here we have the verb ahav, again this is a participle with the I ending, my loving ones, of those who love me, and of those, the verb shamar, again a participle, of those keeping, and then mitzothai, my commandments. So let me repeat, 
but showing loving kindness to the thousands of those loving me and keeping my commandments. Next line, moving on to another commandment. Now, literally, do not lift the name of Yahweh, your God, to the vanity. Shaw at the end is a noun, and it means emptiness or vanity. Uh, this has the sense, then, do not lift the name of Yahweh, your God, to no good purpose. Do not take it up to no good purpose. That is, in vain. So we can translate this, do not take the name of Yahweh, your God, in vain. Ki lo yinakeh, and then the subject, Yahweh, because Yahweh will not, and now the verb naka, this is a PL, imperfect, third masculine singular, and this can have the meaning, hold innocent, regard as innocent, or it could also have the meaning, leave unpunished. So this would be the translator's choice. Because Yahweh will not regard as innocent uh, the one who, so eighth asher, and then we have the repetition of the phrase that we had earlier, who takes his name in vain. Literally, again, who lifts his name to the vanity, to no good purpose. Next line. Zakor. Uh, we can regard that as a call, infinitive absolute, and it has now an imperative usage. Remember the day of the Sabbath. So remember the Sabbath day, and then we have the verb kadash. You see that this is a PL infinitive construct with the O suffix referring back to the Sabbath day. Uh, to make it holy, to sanctify it. Okay, can you please uh, lift the screen? All right, starting off with this line, Shesheth. And we're going to see this now also with an additional word, for six days, or in six days, Ta'avoth, you will labor, Asa, and you will do all, and then melateka, all your work. But now this next line, a little bit more of a challenge here. You see that we have the conjunction, the noun for day, yom, and then ha shivii, which means the seventh. Uh, that's actually an adjective. And this is then a more challenging phrase. I see three possible ways to understand this. Uh, you could take this as a construct chain and regard shivi e now technically an adjective as a substantive, as a noun. But the day of the seventh, the seventh day. Okay, that's one possibility. Another possibility is that perhaps the definite article, the hey, dropped out in between the wow here and the yod. And then that would simply be, but the seventh day. Now, a third possibility, look at the apparatus in BHS, and you will see that the Nash papyrus has the reading, a bait here, and that would be uvayom. In other words, a bait in between the wow here and the yod. And so... That could be translated as seeing the bait, the preposition, as meaning in, or with, or on. I'm going to say, and on the seventh day. Uh, and on, and that would also carry with it, underneath the preposition indicated with the Masoretic pointing the definite article. And on the day the seventh, and on the seventh day. And so you have a choice there as how do you want to understand this, but this is now referring to the seventh day. Now, that reading of the Nash papyrus is supported by the testimony of the Septuagint and the Vulgate. But on the seventh day is a Sabbath, Shabbat, to Yahweh your God. Lo ta'asa, you shall not do any work 
you, Ata, and your son, and your daughter, your man servant, your male servant, uh, your maid servant, or your female servant, and your cattle, and your sojourner, Ger is sojourner in the land, and your sojourner who is in Sha'areka, your gates, who is in your town gates. So work forbidden on the Sabbath day for everyone. Going on, Ki Sheshef, because, and then with the following word, Yamin, because in six days, Asa Yahweh, Yahweh made Eth Hashemayim, the heavens and the earth, Eth Hayam, the sea, what Eth Kol Asher Bam, and all which is in them, Wa Yanach, Wa Yanach. Uh, that's from the verb Nuach, which means to rest. And he rested. So that would be regarded as a call. Uh, imperfect, third masculine singular. It is also a wow consecutive, the verb nuach. And he rested by Yom HaShivii. And there you have this phrase, uh, with preposition bait, and then indicating the definite article with the pathak, and then Yom, the noun, day, and then HaShivii. And he rested on the seventh day, al -Kain. Therefore, Bayrak. Yahweh blessed Eth Yom Ha Shabbat, the day of the Sabbath, the Sabbath day. And then again, the verb Kadash, again, it's a PL. Uh, this time, it's an imperfect, it's a third masculine singular, while consecutive with the who suffix referring back to the Sabbath day. And he made it holy or and he sanctified it. Going on. Kaveth, honor. Uh, this is a peel. Honor, and then avika is the object, as well as imeka. Honor your father and your mother. Both of those are definite direct objects because both nouns have a suffix. So definite direct objects marked by F. Honor your father and your mother. Laman, in order that, now we have the verb arak, and this is actually a hifil, but the hifil here uh, is used with an intransitive sense, in the sense grow long or continue long. In order that, and then the subject is yamekka, in order that your days may be long, grow long, continue long, and then the next phrase, al ha adama. Now, that literally could be translated on the ground, on the ground. Uh, Adama can also have the sense of land or territory, and with that sense, it's basically equivalent to Eretz. Uh, in the land, Asher, which Yahweh, Eloheka, your God, no thane, is giving to you. All right, going on. Ratzach means to murder, to kill. You shall not murder. We're reminded, by the way, that with regard to negative commands or prohibitions, uh, that is always low or all with the imperfect. That's what we see here. You shall not murder. Next one, low, thin off. You shall not commit adultery. Now, off means to commit adultery. Ganav means to steal. You shall not steal. Next one. The verb here, ana, means to answer. Now, literally, this means you shall not answer ba here, uh, the preposition I'm taking now with the sense against, against your neighbor. And then we have here testimony. Eighth can, be, can mean testimony, uh, what a per person says by way of a witness. It can also refer to a person, a witness. Here it means testimony or witness against your neighbor, a witness of a lie. Uh, shaker at the end means lie. So literally, a witness of a lie. You shall not answer against your neighbor a witness of a lie. 
uh, as if the person was asked to testify in court, and so he answers, but he answers with a witness of a lie. That means a false witness. Now, this could be rendered in the familiar way. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Please lift the screen. All right, and then finally, lo, and then we have the verb hamad. That means to desire. It could also be translated as covet. You shall not desire, or you shall not covet. And then baith reeka, uh, the house of your neighbor. And then now, the same verb repeated. You shall not Covet, you shall not desire, a chef, reeka, the wife of your neighbor, nor, and now we have the O suffix, his referring to your neighbor, his manservant, nor his female servant or maidservant, nor shore his ox, nor his donkey, nor kol asher, nor anything which belongs to your neighbor. All right, thus far the text, and I think our time is probably well over by now. So, may the Lord bless your meditation on this text and then your preaching on it, if you choose this as your text. And God guide you, especially in this day and age of increasing secularization and people bypassing, ignoring, attacking the Ten Commandments and formulating their own law codes. This is a summary of the moral law of God, which continues over from the Old Covenant era into the time of the New Covenant, because God's moral nature does not change. And so these are still in place for us today, New Testament believers, showing us how God wants us to live and through the gospel, through the means of grace, God gives us the power and strength in union with Jesus Christ to live as his people to keep these commandments. May God bless your work with this text.